again. Earlier we used to support only Spring, now recently we had uh, JFX also. So, one of the byproducts of working on a marathon is that a few years back when we were working on a marathon, we used to have our own API. At some point of time, we realized that everybody knows Selenium API, right? Okay, most of us know Selenium API, or most of the testers know Selenium API. So, we thought that okay, since once we find the component, whether it is a Java component or a web component, we should be able to use the same API to work on that component. So, then we started working on modifying Marathon so that we will use a Selenium web driver. So, over a period of time, what happened? It's ready. But uh, then we went into Microsoft's problem, backward compatibility. We have people who are using Marathon. And we have a problem of if we use Selenium API and then record our test cases, because we are always worried that, okay, some test cases that are recorded with the earlier version won't be working with the newer version. So, we took long time, but recently we have released it. So, the byproduct of releasing Marathon and Marathonite with Selenium is that, like, one of the major advantages is that, the flexibility that allows. Okay. The Selenium API is much more flexible than whatever API we can generate. The second one is that people don't need to learn another API. Okay. So that's where we are. Okay. So the byproduct is that we have a, a Java driver, okay, which we don't need to use it with Marathon or Marathonite. Okay. We can use regular Selenium test cases we'll be able to develop using the Java driver. Okay. That's what I would like to demonstrate. By the way, how many of you uh, know about Marathon? Does anybody know about Marathon? Marathon and Marathon X? So what is the, uh, what does Marathon provide? What Marathon provides is that it provides a Java driver which provides you the web driver API by which you can access components of your Java suite and Java SX application. The way it works is that we have a Java agent which hooks on to the AUT when we launch the AUT. And then it provides the facilities by which it implements the JSON Y protocol. Selenium JSON Y protocol is implemented, and using that protocol will be accessing it. So what we require is that we require but what, what we require is that uh, we require a mechanism by which we can get a web driver instance. We require a mechanism by which we can find elements, web elements in that. That's what the JSON Y protocol, what we implemented in Java as a Java agent that runs along with the AUT provides us. So how does the API look like? Like I said, there are only two differences. Okay. How do we create a Java driver? Basically because for our web applications, if once we create a Firefox driver, Firefox is launched and then done. Right. But for Java applications, Java applications can be launched in multiple fashions. It can be a web start application, it can be an applet, or it can be a regular batch file, or somebody bundled it as an executable and give it to us. So one of the ways, so there is a mechanism by which we should provide it, right? Okay. So this is what it is. What we do is that web driver driver is equal to new Java driver. This creates Java driver with default interfaces. Uh, sorry, default profile. Default profile is something which is embedded. Embedded basically means this is useful for doing the unit testing. Okay. This is one request we always had. Okay, there are people who are using Marathon and Marathonite. They come back and say that, KD, can we use it for doing unit testing? Our developers are also looking for it. So I always used to say that, no, 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 we can't uh, do unit testing because this is a too high level API at that point of time. So we cannot use it for unit testing. And I always used to point people to Abbott. Abbott is another of the unit testing tools, Java uh, Spring, and it supports Java SWD also. Okay. But it's a pretty good tool. So I used to always tell people that if you are want to do unit testing, go for Abbott. But if you want to do application testing and functional testing, go for Marathon. But with the Java driver interface, now I can confidently say that if you want to do unit testing, use Marathon. We can, we'll provide the interface. So this is how we create. Okay, uh, Embedded launch mode, if you want to create, we just create a new Java driver. And then how does Java driver work? Okay, We create a Java profile and pass it to the user. So what I will do is that I will just give you the concept as far as the these two parts goes, and then we'll go into the code and have a look at it, how it looks like. So there are two types, right? We said that the application can be a FX application, Java FX application, or a Java Spring application. So we have a concept of a launch type. 
what we do is that when we create a profile, we have to create fetch launch value. By default, it goes to string because Marathon was always supporting string, so that is the default value. But if you want to test a FX application, so you do a profile dot fetch launch fetch launch type dot FX application. Besides that, we also have to tell Marathon how the application is going to be launched, and for that particular launch mode, we need to provide mechanisms by which it can pick up the information. Suppose if we are running an executable, we need to have the path for the executable. If we are running an executable jar file, okay, like the application which we launched with Java minus jar, some jar file, if we are going to give it, then we have to specify that it is we are going to use a jar file and specify the path to that. That's what he's providing. So these are the multiple ways in which we can create a Java profile. Okay. The first one we have seen already, it is just launch mode dot embedded. That basically means that the application is not going to be launched separately. It is expected that you will launch your dialog box or a frame, a frame or one of those, and then ask him to test it. The second part of it is <coughs> Java command line. This is useful in the cases where we have a main class name, and then we have a class path, and we are going to execute our program with okay, the syntax goes like something like Java minus CP and give multiple jar files and followed by the main class name. So profile dot set main class and add class path. There are other things also like you can set properties and then which goes as a VM arguments and all those you can set. But these are the main parts of it. Similarly, we can launch it as a command line. So basically, you can your application is shipped as a batch file or a executable. In that case, what we do, we do is that we can launch mode command line and give him the set command and give the path to the executable. And the mm. next one is the executable jar. This is the case where we use Java minus jar and a given executable jar which launches the application. In those cases, what we have to do is that set it as an executable jar and give the path to the application jar. And then the next mode is applet. In this particular case, a marathon launches applet your and test your application. It doesn't go to the, it is not going to launch the browser and within the browser it is going to test. It uses the applet viewer for this purpose. So you just give the path to your HTML file, index.html or application.html, whatever you choose. Besides that, the final one is, one minute, I think I missed out one of them. Okay. There's one more called web start. This is where we have a JNLP file which is hosted on a server and then we go there and then click on it and then either application is launched or we go to the Java WS, Java WS is the command and then we do the web start. In that case, what we are going to do is that you give a Java profile launch mode web start and then we have to do set JNLP file and give path to the JNLP file. Okay. In all these cases, what Marathon does is that except for the embedded case, in all the cases, all these parameters is gathered together and when we actually create a Java driver with this profile, it launches the application. Launches the application along with a small add-on to it using a Java agent. What it, uh, what the add-on provides is that JSON wire protocol using TCP IP communicates with our application. <laughs> so once we did do that part of it, so now we have to find the components. We have application running. We have a web driver instance with us, but we have to find the components on the application. Okay, there can be text fields, there can be drop down boxes, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, Marathon Power, what it does is that the Java driver, Marathon's Java driver, what it does is that it re implements the find by call list. Okay. So, when you do a by dot class name, okay, you provide the uh, fully full path name, including the package name. And what it finds is that on the current screen, whatever current window, whatever we have, it finds all the components that are an instance of that text field. Similarly, we can have, we can, uh, the J component, the component, AWT component provides us a mechanism by which we can do a set name. Okay, this is similar to set ID of HTML. On the HTML tag, we will provide ID, right? Similarly, we have a concept of setting a name to a component. Okay. If we have set a component name, using component name, or JavaFX provides set ID. So if we have a Java FX in node, set ID and then set ID, then either by dot name or by dot ID, both of them we can use to actually access the component which is given that name or ID. And <coughs> oh, almost all the components, all the string components or AWT components are 
used, the class names are used to create the tags. Okay. So what we can do is the tag name, if the text field is there, the tag name of it is going to be text hyphen field because that is capital. It has similarly T view is in VFX. Java FX has a T view. If you want to use tray view, T view. So then we can use the by tag name T view and it gives you all the T view components that are existing in the current system. Once we have these components, we can use it the way the normal web element API. Okay, you can click on it, you can do a get text on it, and if it has a text, it gives you back the text. If not, it gives you nil. Okay. Or you can uh, right click on it. All the rest of the API is going to be exactly as the regular normal web element API. And the finally, this is the most powerful one, is ASN. What Marathon Java Driver does is, the uh, uh, ASN wide protocol along with the JSON wide protocol, it also implements a CSS parser. So using the CSS parser, it implements a CSS. Okay, this is much more useful, basically because in a HTML page, if you look at a table, table has TR, TD, TR, TD, right? So we have multiple rows, multiple columns. Okay. So at any point of time, if I want to access one of them, I have a physical component that is available on the screen. On the HTML page or the web page, I have a physical component that is available. But Java Spring, Java FX use something called renderer and uh, editor. Okay. So if we draw a screen with a table in it, the table cell, for each table cell, we do not have a physical component. I cannot, there is no way I can access a single cell and say that this is my physical component for this cell. What it does, it does something called a renderer. Render it is a single object it creates and it uses it to draw it on the table. So there should be another mechanism by which we can find out these components. Okay. So we so what we use is that we use pseudo elements for this. Okay. You know the pseudo elements in the CSS selector, right? CSS selector, colon, colon, nth index. Especially nth index is what we use. Okay. If you want to say that uh, li, a list is there, the second element of the list, you can say that li to colon colon nth index. The same thing what we use here. Okay. So if uh, I'll come back to the table again then in the next uh, slide. But at this point of time, okay, have a look at it. This is exactly the same thing. Okay. The first CSS selector is saying that a text field that has a set name or set ID set as username. And the second CSS selector tells us that in all the text fields, get me the second name. Okay. The index starts with one. Not like uh, Java for loops or C for loops, where it starts with zero, it starts with one. So first is called one, the second is second. Second text field in the screen. And uh, one thing you need to note is that uh, this text field nth index of two need not be the second text field in your screen. It is dependent upon how the panel is created. In the panel, okay, somebody might add a text field into the third row. Then you do get it. You won't get that. So this is what we use for accessing all those components for which we do not have a physical component on the screen. Okay, we use pseudo elements. Okay. In this particular case, I have talked about the table, okay. but the same thing is available for list, tree, tree you can use by the path and then you can get it, and all that are other, other components. Like a combo box, you can get all the options. Okay. There is a all options created over here. This one and then this one. Okay. The documentation is available and I will show you the link. So basically the first one is what it does is that find elements by CSS selector table column column all cells. What it does, it gives you web elements for each one of the cells. These are pseudo elements. The element itself doesn't exist. But whenever you access this element, the Java driver, what it is going to do is that it's going to translate the coordinates, etc., etc., to that particular element. Similarly, the next one gets all the elements that has text is equal to Joe in it. Suppose if you have a table with multiple values, you want to find out all the table cells which has uh, some text in it. So in that case, that's what we are going to do. Table all cells, text is equal to Joe. The next one is going to get a table using the row and column. So three comma two, so third row, second column, the cell is getting back. And then, well, like I said, we have renderers. These are all gives you back pseudo elements that are pointed to your render. Okay. But there is another concept of editor. How do we do an inline edit of a table? In Swing or uh, JWT or JavaFX, when you do an inline edit of it, 
Okay, basically what happens is that at that point of time when you double click on a stable cell, a editor component is created and it is added into the hierarchy and you do the edit and come back. So using Java driver, when we want to get the, we want to modify a cell value suppose. A cell value, there is a existing value, you want to override it, then in that particular case what we need to do? We need to ask you to give you back the editor of it and then work on the editor. So in typical cases what we what will do is that find element CSS selector MN cell C2 editor and web element we get and web element dot send keys you send whatever text you want to replace. So with this uh, this one I will just go into the demo and then show you how we can actually create a quiz project and then see to that like how we can write one of the test cases. So this is the sample application which we will be using. Okay. So basically it's a simple login uh, application. It is a test application, it doesn't do anything. And then let me just execute it and then let's have a look at that. So we have a username field and we have a password field. There is a checkbox called remove for me and then we have cancel and login. Once we enter any data into. So the login screen is going to be in a login button is going to be enabled only when the username and password is set. So I'm creating a J unit test case. Let me just create another source folder for this. It is a good idea to always keep the tests and sources separate. So I will just create a source folder for J. Run the test case and checked out once. It failed. For using Java driver, obviously, whenever you write Selenium test cases, you write uh, you add all the Selenium drivers, right? Selenium jars. Like in the same way when we are using Java driver, what we need to is that we need to add Java driver as well as we need to add the Selenium driver because Java driver is nothing but one of the Selenium drivers. It uses the web driver interface. So that's what we are going to do for this project. <laughs> Go to properties, pick Java build path, I mean the library, and add the small jar. Okay. What do we require? We require Java driver. And since we are, I am planning to use the a embedded mode, so I need to add another one called Java agent also. If you are testing the appli uh, FX application for unit testing the FX application, you will be adding FX agent. Okay. In this particular case, we have to use a Java agent. If you don't mind, let me pick up my FX card key on the screen. I am using as adding Marathon Java driver and then 
Java agent by Josh. And I also need to add all the support libraries, that is Selenium driver and so forth. So suppose So now that we have added this, for me it is available for me to use the Java driver. So this uh, okay. As a first test case, what I'm going to do is that I'll launch the this one. What you call our login screen and check whether all the elements exist on it or not. So that's what I'm going to do. So if that is the case, the first thing I require is that uh, before the test case. I want to open the login dialog. So I'm going to just create this and just doing it so that it comes in the middle of the screen. any parameters, it is going to create a embedded okay. We don't need to call it a Java driver itself, it can be a, just a web driver in case that's okay. I just want to check that that uh, is coming up. We run the driver dot close in uh, if it is a external application that has been launched. Driver dot close actually closes that application, but when we run it in embedded mode, it doesn't do a system dot exit etc. So it is still running. And then I just want to ensure that uh, that login window is also closed so that I would not have.
can see some output there, right? This is the log messages that are coming from the Red Java driver. Okay. Basically, it's saying that, okay, uh, when we did a do close, a delete message has gone. When we did a sell, it got the session ID, a query has created a new session ID, which you can ignore. Now that we have the drivers, So the same thing we can do for all other ones also. We have one checkbox, we have two buttons, etc. Right? But that is of no great interest for us. So let's go for a regular test. Okay. One of the things is that whenever we start an application, whenever this login window is coming up, the login button is supposed to have been disabled. And it gets enabled only when a text is entered into the username and the password. So that's what we would like to try it out. already have a driver so we don't need to get the driver we get the obviously this is a bad way of doing it because we are using the tag name if somebody goes and adds one more uh, text field into our screen, it goes off. Okay. Let's have a look at the using by ID, etc. also a little bit later. So I get the username here. And similarly, We have two J buttons there, login field as well as the cancel. There are two buttons. So we need to ensure that we get only the login button. So we are saying that test is equal to so the first thing is that before we do anything, we want to check that login field is disabled. Correct? So I do Look at it 
there is nothing, no specific, uh, what you call the API for Java driver. Okay, just because we are running a Spring application, we are not changing any API. It is still using the standard web element API or web, web driver API we are using here. Okay, so ease enabled is the part of the web element, so that's the same thing we do. And then now we want to usernames and keys. Case and see. So both the test cases are passed. So as far as test writing test case is like this. Okay. But all of us know about the page object model. So we've heard of page object model, right? Okay, it's going to be very easy. But the same thing is that we can use it. Instead of writing the code and uh, making everybody bored, okay, let me just show you a project which I have created for the same application, but which uses the page object, object model and shows the test case. I'm closing this project so that uh, won't get confused about this. Driver dot find by for each one of those. So we are 
doing it here. The first case, look at this here. Page login, PL is equal to new page login of driver. And from then onwards, PL dot set user, PL dot set password. Okay, we are not going to do a driver dot find element exercise. Okay. And regular web applications, it's pretty useful. And for if you, you want to use Java driver with for the testing your Java thing and the FX application, it's very, very useful. Okay. Similarly, it has the page object model has one more facility, right? If you have IDs and names are given, then what it does is it automatically selects by ID or name. Okay. The same thing we can use it basically because it is all surrender what Java driver is doing is nothing but implementing a JSON wire protocol and a driver for Java applications. So anything that you can do with Selenium, we'll be able to do it. So let's look at the page log build. Okay. When I created the login page, okay, I have given set username, uh, set name for each one of the components. So what I need to do is that I need to just create web elements, username, password, remember me, login, and cancel, and then <laughs> I do a init, and then that's my standard domain application. And then using this, the test doesn't fail. Test is going to still going to say. This is using the second page login. It's closed. Actually, we just did a command C, uh, control C, control V, and then created the same login, except for changing the the page login to page login 2, we didn't do anything. It just works. Okay. <laughs> Quickly, I would like to just show one more example. In this case, I'm talking about uh, table, right? How are you going to work with tables? Basically, because we don't have physical component for the cells, we use the pseudo elements. And if you use the pseudo elements, this is one of the example from swing, swing itself, along with the swing example from, from Oracle. When we pick it up, we'll get this. So the example looks like this. So I think, uh, sorry, I ran the test rather than the example itself. So this is how the example is. Okay. Basically, we have uh, first name, favorite color, sorry, mistake. I mean, sport, number of years, and a checkbox. Okay. And then in one of these, this is editable. So we can uh, do all of us like to get those. Okay. So this is the application. For this application, we wrote the test. Okay. How do they look? Setup is exactly the same. Okay. And then this is where we are creating the table and then just showing it. And since it's a panel, I have to create a same and add it to it. It's because of the application obviously. So this is where I'm checking the whether initial content is proper or not. Okay. Basically, what do we have? Driver dot find elements by table. So it gets me the table and expect it. Basically, what it does is that when you do a get attribute of content of a table or a tree, it creates it by JSON object in JSON bag. Okay, in this particular case, it's going to be a JSON array. So it is a JSON array. So I create a JSON array with the table dot get attribute content and check out whether the content is the same or not. This is what I am going to do. So how do we edit the text field? The CSS selector is going to be MN cell. You got it. And then we get the editor from here. And then for the editor, we are going to send widget, whatever we want to enter. And then we have to pass a keys dot enter. Basically, because enter key has to be pressed. Whenever you are editing a table in swing, but after editing it, you have to press enter. So we have to press that. And then we are checking out whether it's the same or not. So how do we edit, edit the checkbox field? Okay. We are getting the MN cell again. And then getting the text and then checking out whether it's true or not. We are clicking on it and checking out whether it's false or not. And the complicated one is this. Okay. There is a color.
color field, if you have seen that uh, application, we have shown the application, right? The second column is a color field. So when you click on it, actually what it does is that it opens up a color source dialog, and you select a color from there, and then once you select, select a color, that color is set to the that particular column. So how do we check that out? So this is what it is. So color source itself is considered as a element, a component by Python Java Drive. So I can use say that okay, fine, give me the color chooser component, but I don't know where the buttons are, where the color uh, that uh, patch where it shows multiple colors, etc. So I won't be knowing about it. So basically, what I do is that I do a execute script on it. Look at that. Set color, and I'm setting it to black color. And then once I press OK on it, okay, once it goes back, I'm checking it out whether the same color that is the black is set up. Basically, I got a table. I get the cell. Okay. I check it pseudo component dot background whether it is whatever current values are not, and I click on it, and it opens up the window pick a color. So I switch to that window. I get the color chooser component, and using the color chooser component, I am setting the color to it, and then I again click on OK, and then come back to the table dialog edit window, basically because that color source dialog goes off once I press OK. And then I check whether the particular cell the color has changed or not. So run the test and see. Okay. So this is what is the demo I wanted to show you today. Any questions on this or anything extra you want to say? On what I have shown you is the open source project, which you can use it for testing your application itself. It records the, your scripts in Ruby, like actually JRuby, and then does all the work. Okay, it records the script. You can run the tests on the top of it. And if you want to use Java and then use Java driver to do it, okay, one of the reasons why I'm showing it is that for basically for looking at the developer side, saying that okay, for unit testing it's going to be good. Okay, the we have a plan for. We have a assertion window in Marathon. Okay. Uh, do we have time? Can I? Fifteen minutes we have. I can just show you that how it looks like. Okay. Basically, we can do a right click and then it shows the assertion window. From there, you can see the properties of the component on which you did the right click. Okay. The same thing we are planning to bring it out onto this, so that we can use it for. Uh, so the only thing what you are going to do is the profile your Java profile you are going to set a another option. Saying that I want to look at the properties. So when it is running the application, you will be able to right click, control right click, and then see the properties of it. Okay. And since we have it, I will just show you the, how it looks like. Okay. Whether I have a working system, hopefully, yes. Instantly, Marathon test scripts okay, allows you to access cell name again, but you need to use the Ruby binding for it because Marathon test scripts are in Ruby. Okay, use the driver dot whatever it is we defined for it. So, oh, 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 okay. so I do a, I'm doing a 
doing a command write window. So, this is our sort of window. We have a plan, but because of some deadlines and some other issues, I could never bring it out. <laughs> the idea was that in the Java profile, you just set a variable saying that I want to bring out this window. From then onwards, this window is going to come up whenever you do a control command write window. From here, you can see all the properties of it. See, currently, it's saying that access full name is J dialog because that's the command we write command write keeps on the J dialog command. So, string set three is nothing but a demo of string update. This is a given by some. It's an application. String set three is open source, but uh, currently, I don't think anybody is there who is maintaining it. Okay, but it shows all the functionality of string. Which one? The Medison? No, it has been released. You have, you can go to my, our website, medisontesting.com, and have a look at that. For Java Spring applications, it's a regular functional testing tool. Okay, it allows you to record, it allows you to playback. Okay, if uh, our commercial version supports refactoring, creating data driven tests, all that stuff. I don't want to come to a conference on Selenium and then <laughs> talk about our product. There are two parts to it. Marathon is open source. Okay. It is uh, hosted on GitHub. I will show you the link. I have still a couple of minutes more. Okay. You can go to the GitHub and then get it. Done. And then Marathonite is a commercial version where we add the refactoring support, we add the data driven support, Marathon grid, that is Selenium grid implemented for Java applications. All the text applications should be there. Marathon. Yeah. Like I said, we have been working on it for three years, almost two weeks. One and a half years back, this product is ready. We could have developed, released it at the point of time. But our major problem was that we have quite a few customers who are using it, and we weren't sure whether once I put it onto Marathon, the backward compatibility is fixed or not. So that testing itself took long time for us. Almost nine, nine to ten months we worked on it for creating documents saying that what all incompatibility is exist. Mostly it is compatible, but there are a couple of incompatibilities when you use internal planes and all that stuff. So these are the resources. This is the Marathon website, marathontesting.com, where you can see the details about Marathon as well as the Marathonite. Okay. And if you want to Look at the marathon source itself, including the Java driver source and all. It is there in the GitHub. And the demo what I have shown you today, including a FX demo also. I said uh, it supports FX, but I never talked about FX. I'm just talking about its link. Okay. So there is a marathon demo project folder in GitHub, another repository, where you can pick up the current whatever demo I have shown you, as well as for a FX application. And including using Marathon itself, regular uh, Marathon recording and everything, application. Okay. And if you want to download Marathon itself, we generally release it on source codes. So source code not project slash Marathon. 